fun. Yeah. Proud to be an American. We are getting ready for the 4th of July, and we're going to get the party started a little early with beef. Yeah. Lots and lots of beef, because it doesn't get more American than that. You know what, though? It is helpful if you know exactly what it is when you're trying to go to the store and select the right cut for the right crowd. Here with his expert advice, we welcome regional manager from Von Hansen's at 8 feet tall, he's <laughs> Phil Carlson. Hi, Phil. Nice Hi, to Phil. see you. Hi, good to see you guys. I love this because this stresses me out so much, the idea of going to the store and buying, you know, a relatively expensive piece of meat. You want to make yeah. sure that you're getting the right thing, and then if people don't cook it the right way, ugh, it's the worst. I know, yeah. You've been working at Von Hansen since you were 14 years old. That's right. So you said, forget about child labor laws, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's it, yeah. So you just, you just loved it. What was your first job there? I just cleaned the back room, actually. Seriously? When I first started, yeah. Just clean back room and rocking beef jerky and all that kind of fun stuff. Oh, so. yeah. fun. And then yeah. you learned the ropes. That yep. is very, very good. Okay, let's yep. go through some of this meat, hey? Yeah. Now, when it comes to picking, you brought some examples. Yeah. What are your favorites? Well, my personal favorite is the ribeye. Oh, this right. one right there. It's kind yeah. of, I call it the king of steaks. See? I think it beats out the porterhouse, but. Didn't I tell you, know you the ribeye is the most manly of meat? Now, here's the thing. Um, I would go in this direction over the ribeye because I don't like any fat, but maybe I'm thinking of that wrong. Why do you like the ribeye? Well, you're actually thinking of it totally wrong. So, <laughs> fat, fat is your friend. <laughs> fat is your friend. It okay. is your friend no, when it comes to steaks. <laughs> yeah. No, it's seriously your friend. The intermuscular fat, especially the marbling that you see on the steaks, especially yeah. ribeyes and on your New York strips, that's where the flavor is. If you ever had a really dry steak, unfortunately, sometimes mm -hmm. that's when it's too lean of a steak. Yeah, we don't so, want that. We huh. want a little bit of fat. Okay, so the ribeye is here, the strip is here, and then what is this guy over here? This is what we call at Von Hansen's a grill steak. So it's bottom sirloin. It's great for the money. I mean, as far as an economical steak goes, awesome. It you is funny how it, some of them have like, you know, you just have that, oh, the filet mignon or the ribeye, but there's kind of those under the radar cuts yeah, that absolutely. are just as good, but a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Now, there's another way to do a cheat sheet, and I love this, the interactive butcher counter from the Minnesota Beef Council. This is cool. You can pull this up, and you can punch in, like, what am I looking for? What, how am I, am I grilling this? Am I cooking this inside? What am I doing? So you punch that in, and then it will, I'm telling you, it takes the guesswork out of it and says, here's what you should be looking for. So when you go to the store, even if you stop at the butcher counter, yeah. you, have a, you don't go up like a total dummy and just say, like, <laughs> what should I do for the fourth? But you've got a game plan upon going in. This is very helpful. Now, seasoning important. Okay, so the classic uh, seasoning at Von Hansen's. I, I mean, I like grew up on this seasoning. Okay, so explain yep, what absolutely. this is. This is like the key to everything that my dad makes. Yeah. So the special spice that we have right here. It's an all-purpose seasoning, it's similar to a, like a Lowry seasoned salt, but it's a little less salty. Yeah. A lot more flavors going on. Oh, yeah. People get addicted to it. We actually ship it all over the U.S. Is that people right? Move yeah. away. I've never tried this. People oh my move gosh. Away and they, they want it shipped to so them. We so we use it on lots of beef things at okay. home, but my dad also uses it on his ribs, and yeah, so absolutely. it's just like a hit. I was going to say, are you hitting burgers with this? Just steaks, absolutely. whatever. Burgers, chicken, fish. Some people put it on popcorn. I think that's a little bit crazy myself, but I like it's it. a justin cool. free zone. Yep. It exactly. really is. What's this exactly. garlic cracked pepper business? Garlic cracked pepper is another favorite of mine. Um, essentially, just what it says it's garlic, cracked pepper, a little bit of salt in there. Okay. Great on steaks, great on chops, great on chicken. But just salt and pepper is a great way to go with just a classic steak. Easy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like on the ribeyes in New York Strip, sometimes you don't want to overpower such a great steak yeah. with a lot of flavorings. Um, Especially uh, the, the salt and the pepper like that. It's kind of a win-win. A I know we've talked about under seasoning too. So when you can can you explain like a little bit if you're going to salt and yeah. pepper a ribeye, like what should that look like as far as how much salt and pepper you yeah, should have absolutely. on there? Absolutely. So we'll just take. Oh look, look he's just, just going to do yeah. it. Of course, this yeah. man handles it. Fabulous. Look, yeah. yeah. this is great. So, I mean, you really you can go pretty liberal with it. Okay. I mean, something about like that. And I mean, sometimes you can kind of pat it in, rub it in, and kind of just let it sit there for about an hour or so, room temperature. Okay. Pretty simple. So biggest mistakes that people are making when they are cooking a beautiful piece of meat. Yeah. It just has to kill you to see it just cooked to death. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. When you cook that one to death, that hurts. Yeah. 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 So like this, usually it's all it's all on temperature. Everybody thinks they have to crank their grill up to like 500 degrees, 600 degrees. The hotter the better. Right. Not the case at all. So steak like that, I do about 375. Okay. I grill it just. I only flip it once, and it's about seven minutes aside for medium rare, and that's it. 
No. So you don't have to sit there and flip it 15 times. But you've also had it come to room temperature, so you're not trying to take the edge off. Yep. So think about that, okay? Uh, because I was going to say, a lot of times I would hear that you want to sear each side, right, and then keep that juice inside. But and for me, I would be cranking the grill up like yeah. full bore. Yeah. Wrong well, again. 375. I don't like to go over 400. I mean, sometimes if you're doing a lot of stuff on the grill, you kind of have to turn it up a little bit just because you have so much mass on the grill. But no, really, 375, 400 degrees. That's it. I only flip it one time. So. Oh, okay. So the the Minnesota Beef Council also has a cooking chart that this can help you too if you want like a little cheat sheet. And so, what does this have? This has the cut and then the times, so that you just know. Okay, I get home and I remember. And then there's a trick that you have for checking the temperature of your actual grill by using your yeah, hand. Yeah, because I don't have a thermostat on my grill, so I can't just look at it and say, okay, great, we're at 400. And a lot of charcoal yeah. don't have. have right. Absolutely. Yeah. We can actually solve that problem by getting a little oven safe thermometer. Good. You can actually store it right in the grill. That works out really good. Otherwise, that trick is if you can hold your hand over the grill, not too close, but for about three seconds. Sometimes it's a quick three seconds. It's about the temperature you want to be at. Very so. good. Good yeah. stuff. It's a wealth of knowledge. Can I ask one more question? Wait, Mike, I just need one more second. How quickly or how soon before um, you cook should you be salting and peppering your steak? Is that five minutes before? Is that immediately before? I usually do about that hour beforehand when you take oh, it out so that oh, I get up from temperature. It kind of oh. lets it soak in a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not going to hurt. So. All right. Cool, All right, cool. I knew that. Yeah. I had a can you start grilling him, yes, sir? What's yeah. going on yeah, here? <laughs> hey, if you want more tips on beef cuts and grilling from the Minnesota Beef Council, you can head to their website. We've made it simple for you. We've got a link to that on our website. Big thanks to the Minnesota Beef Council for sponsoring Twin Cities nice to Live. See you, Phil. Good to see you guys. Phil. Yeah.